the first serious attempt of de-dollarization came from allies and it came from European Union. So European Union came up with a currency called Euro. So if Germany and UK wants to trade with each other, they would trade in Euro and not the US dollar. Germany and France wants to trade with each other, they will use Euro. So this was the first serious challenge to the US dollar. And the Euro was able to snatch about 20% of the reserve currency status of the dollar. Furious with this, United States uh, dragged the NATO to a Yugoslavia conflict and brought the valuations of Euro down. By this time, uh, the European Union said that we are no more going to park our savings in the US Treasury and the US dollar. So now, furious with that, United States brought China in the World Trade Organization, distributed all the benefits of the World Trade Organization membership to China, and then we know the journey, how China became the manufacturing giant and the factory that it has become of the world today. That's really interesting right. that because the European Union challenged the US dollar, we ended up having a Yugoslav war, which bal balkanized the country. Um, these policies to bring China into the World Trade Organization has completely changed the power structure of the world, which I'm sure the US probably at that time had not envisaged. It's, a, it's sort of a, a side effect that you know they, they probably didn't expect to happen. And um, these are, it's as you said, the, the sort of the machinations behind the scene really set a very different trajectory of events that anybody could have predicted at that time. Correct. So uh, as soon as European Union withdrew uh, uh, from uh, parking the savings, uh, it was like a panic attack for the U.S. economy mm -hmm. because you know, a chunk of uh, European countries, uh, you know, withdrawing from valuations from their sector. So uh, hurriedly, they had to cook up something. So they passed an act called Graham Lilly Act. So what did the Graham Lilly Act do? It repealed the requirements of the Glass-Steagall Act. The Glass-Steagall requirements was uh, that the public deposit would be kept separate from investment banking. That was a requirement in the US economy. So that was repealed and this Graham Lilly Act mixed up the investment banking with the commercial banking. So now what was happening was uh, as soon as an American deposits an amount in the account, uh, the bank has a legal right to sweep that amount into a separate account and then play speculative trade with it in all the sectors of the economy. So this is how, because the European Union came up with this euro currency, US had to do this kind of jugard in the internal economy to mix the public deposit money with the reserve currency bubble to support the IT sector at that point in time. Yes, but yes, since... I think because as you said, the Glass-Steagall Act, which was in 1933, if I'm not wrong, separated the commercial banking with investment banking because, to, because there was moral hazard in that structure. And yet later on, they repealed it. But that moral hazard was still there, nothing changed. It was just this desire yeah. to maintain the reserve currency status, which made them make a completely different political decision. Um, which is completely contrary to what they had said before. Yep. So now what happened, as soon as the European Union withdrew their savings uh, and, and the cycle of investments in the US Treasury, the dot-com got burst and the IT sector lost valuations of about 78% by October 2002. So this was the first ever de-dollarization that the world has seen. And right now what is going on is the final de-dollarization, which is why uh, I am not surprised the way IT sector is laying off people. Because uh, my, my uh, prediction is that by the end of this year, 
U.S. stocks, bonds, and derivatives will lose another 15 to 35 percent valuations, and the IT sector is going to just come down. That's what's going to happen because it was born out of this reserve currency status, uh, so it's, it's going to go with it, right? Okay, so we'll continue. Uh, what happened yes, next? Please. So once uh, the Chinese now promised that instead of European Union, it's we who are going to take the U.S. Treasury. So uh, the Chinese invested in the U.S. Treasury. So at this point in time, as we all know, China and Japan together holds more than 50 percent of the U.S. Treasury. Um, China became the manufacturing giant that we all know. 2008 crisis comes and because this Graham Lilly Act uh, mixed this public deposits with the, you know, investment banking. Nobody went to jail because it was legal. Nobody went to jail in the 2008 crisis. It was all legal, right? So after the 2008 crisis, as we all know that the Western economies have the same solution to every economic problem, which is turning on the printers. So. United States again starts printing dollars from 2009. This time, this entire printing cost becomes brutal inflation to the rest of the world and particularly the Middle East. And the Middle East faces what we call as the Arab Spring because of the food inflation. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.